Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back, my dear friends. A very good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you, uh, whichever part of the globe you are, and whatever time you are listening and seeing this video lectures. This is the fifth lecture under the subject title Investment Analysis and Portfolio Management under Swam Lecture Series. And my good name is Raghunandan Sangupta from the IME department at IIT Kanpur in India. So, lecture number 5 as I stated. So, what we will consider on the lecture if you remember this is a broad area of investor analysis. So, we started with a basics of economics, then went to how you find out the concept of rate of return, total return and the concepts of different type of uh, how combinations can be done. And then in this fifth, le fifth lecture, if you remember, we will discuss about how portfolios can be formulated with keeping in the main idea that you want to optimize a certain output. What is that output that will have different notions? We will consider that slowly as we proceed. So, what are the <coughs> important aspects which we will co cover here or the main, main lecture descriptions would be? We will first consider there are two assets and giving given two assets how we formulate the portfolio of two assets considering different combinations of these two assets we can have obviously with the main idea that either you want to optimize one being uh, maximize the return another can be minimize the risk there can be other combinations also which we'll discuss or a combination of risk and return or taking some combinations depending on what is your what is the investor's outlook? We will consider how to basically depict it using the risk return framework in a Cartesian coordinate or a two dimensional case. Then slowly we will expand that uh, more than two assets considering three assets and how this extension of the idea of two assets considering that you want to form a portfolio of two assets can be extended to three assets how you can basically have a look at the idea of optimization or what is the idea of, of the overall risk and the return of these three assets. And based on that, we will slowly go into the concept of more than three assets, consider that how over overall the feasible set of the feasible region can be visualized, can be thought about and how after you have basically drawn or, or analyzed the feasible set and region. Then considering the concept of non association and the risk aversion concept, you can very simply have an idea that how the overall efficient frontier would look like because everybody wants to be on the efficient frontier considering the risk return framework. Then we will find out what we mean by the minimum variance set on, and then we will also find out what we actually mean by the minimum variance point also. Now, let us consider if you remember we have given the formula that how the return and the risk for a portfolio can be found out given n number of different assets. All these assets are risky remember we will slowly relax that and consider also the risk free interest also. So, if there are two assets or more than two assets let me be very general. So, if I write the formula the expected value I am only writing the expected value let me use a different color so it will be easier let me use the red one. So, the expected value would be summation of w i w i is the weight multiplied by r i bar where r i bar is the average return for the ith asset. So, so that that will be if equal to r bar p where the, the subscript p means the portfolio. 
So, we have written the formula for the return for n assets. Now, if we write the return or the covariance or the variance of the portfolio which will denote by sigma square suffix p, again p is the portfolio. So, it will be all the double summations from i is equal to 1 to a n. So, it is w i w j where w's are the weights into sigma i j where sigma i j is the covariance of the ith to the jth asset. So, now utilizing this two formulas which I had written one in red and one in blue, I will basically come back. Now, if there are two assets A and B and their respective returns and variance, let us consider are given. So, we will denote, I will use the black color here. So, the for R A, for the A asset it will be R bar A, which is the average return and for the B 1 asset will be R bar B corresponding to the variance you will have sigma square suffix a sigma square suffix b for the bth asset and the correlation coefficient will be rho a b so where is rho coming we have all we already know so i'll just expand this equation so this covariance which you have for i and j if you write it down basically you will have three terms one is rho i j which is the correlation coefficient, sigma i which is the standard deviation for the ith asset, sigma j is the standard deviation of jth asset, sigmas which is standard deviation are basically the square root of the variances. So, let us again come back to the part which I was discussing and I have written in black. <coughs> for assets a and b the corresponding returns and variances are given which I have already written. Now, consider arbitrarily and we want to find out weights. So, consider arbitrarily the weights are w a and obviously the other one will be w b, but w b need not be utilized because the sum of the weights is 1. So, hence we can consider w b as 1 minus w a. So, obviously there would be only one variable to be calculated and once w a is found out the weight is found, weight is found out, we can basically subtract that value from 1 and find out the weight of w b. So, let the corresponding weights be w 1 which is 1 minus alpha we are considering uh, um, uh, the weights not as w's we will consider alpha and 1 minus alpha. So, w 1 is 1 minus alpha and obviously w 2 will be alpha so, hence the sum actually add up to 1 which is true. So, I will just highlight it. So, this add up to 1 as it is true. Now, as alpha varies from 0 to 1 the portfolio goes from one end to the other. So, say for example, if we consider that alpha, let us consider that alpha is the weight which you are putting in B and 1 minus alpha which is the weight which you are putting from A. So, if alpha is 1, then we put all the weights in B, which means zero amount of weight in A and is alpha is 0, it will means we are putting all the weights in A and zero amount of weights in basically B. So, let me continue reading the second point. As alpha varies from 0 to 1, the portfolio goes from one that contains only asset A to the other which contains mixture of asset A and B. That means, any value of alpha between 0 and 1 which will mean say for example, alpha is 0 0.5, it means we are investing 50 percent in A and 50 percent in B. And if we are considering alpha is say for example, 0 0.75 if we are, if which means we are investing 75 percent of our weight or a total amount of money in asset B and 25 rest 25 in asset A. So, so, one that contains only asset A to one that contains only a mixture of asset A and B and to the other extreme where it contains only asset B. So, values of alpha if they are outside the range of 0 1 which is the, if they are negative that means we are doing short selling. So, when values of alpha are outside the range of between 0 and 1 both inclusive so, it makes one of these other weights if it is negative it is and the other would be obviously be positive because more than one because the sum is always one. So, it means that for the negative weights it means short selling we are borrowing it and utilizing that that asset which has negative weights to formulate the portfolio. Now, how would the curve look like that is important we will visit that within few seconds. 
the curve would look like the one which is shown in the diagram which is just going to come but what would be the exact shape of the curve would actually depend what is the correlation coefficient existing between a and b or asset 1 and asset 2 because we have two assets only now we will discuss these other two points later on like i'll i'll uh, i'll explain that because rather than only reading out it is best that if i show the diagram it will make much sense to all the viewers and the and the listeners so this is how we are trying to proceed and solve so let me utilize the coloring scheme um, uh, like the violet so this is b and this is a now if i consider and if you if you concentrate on this cartesian coordinate along the y axis we have the return so this capital r can also be replaced by small r so whether you have capital r or small r would not matter it's just a way of trying to depict the diagram so this is the total return as the rate of return as we know and along the x axis we have the standard deviation not the variance remember that because that will help us trying to explain so this is point a and this is point b and if i have the this concept of variance of that portfolio so the actual formula would be w okay we don't have w we are utilizing only alpha my mistake so this will be alpha square into r b bar whole square plus 2 this is correlation coefficient suffix a b into alpha into 1 minus alpha this is w1 into w2 into sigma a into sigma b oh this is sigma sorry this is not not i was basically trying to write out my mistake so this would be not for the expected value is for the variance so this is alpha square into sigma square b and the last term third term would be 1 minus alpha square into sigma a square now let us proceed one by one if case one so let me use red color case one if rho a b is 1 plus 1 remember then in that case your actual formula becomes alpha square sigma square plus 2 alpha into 1 minus alpha into sigma a sigma b plus 1 minus alpha whole square into sigma square a so if i consider this it, it actually it is a simple formula of quadratic a plus b whole square so if this is the case so you will basically have the line if i find out the square root so if this is actually means a quadratic of the form a plus b whole square where this a the small a small a term will be alpha square sigma square suffix b and small b term would be 1 minus alpha with the square of that would be 1 minus alpha whole square into sigma square a so a square is this term and b square is this term and obviously twice ab you can understand if if rho which is the correlation coefficient is 0 is 1 sorry now if i find out the square root so this was basically under case 1 it's for the uh, variance so standard deviation will be a plus b which is a straight line so this is the straight line which i have i'm just hashing it with the red line red dot so in this case if alpha is 0 all the weights are in a which is point a here if alpha is 1 all the weights are point b 
which I have marked here. Now, what happens if it is minus? So, let me erase this. If this is minus, so let me use the color blue case 2. If uh, correlation curve is minus 1, so this will be alpha square sigma beta b square minus of 2 rho is, is basically now minus 1. So, this can go. So, this is alpha into 1 minus alpha sigma a sigma b plus 1 minus alpha square sigma a square, which actually is the concept of a minus b whole square quadratic. Very interestingly, if I take the square root, it can either be expressed as a minus b whole square or it can be in, a, expressed by b minus whole, a whole square. So, we take the mod of a minus b, because a minus b whole square, b minus b a whole square remains the same. So, if I plot it, the actual line would be the one which I am now marking in the hashed line. this blue hash line. Now, if you note down here, I have noted it, which I am going to mark in, in highlighter yellow color. These blue lines are for rho a b minus 1 and these red hash lines is for rho is equal to plus 1. Now, any value of rho has to be between plus 1 and minus 1. It cannot be more than plus 1, it cannot be less than minus 1. So, all the combinations which you have between a and b considering different values on alpha and beta would be a set of graphs which would be like this. Say for example, if I have any value of alpha, say for example, alpha is minus 0 0.85, minus 0.75 minus 0.45 or say for example, it goes to the case of plus 0.5. So, at one point this, this bold line which you see is basically for the case which I have drawn just arbitrarily is for the case when rho is 0. So, what is the equation in that case? In that case, the equation is which is case 3 would be alpha square into sigma square b. So, this rho is 0. So, obviously, the second term would not be there. The other term would be 1 minus alpha square sigma square a to a square plus b square only. So, combination. So, let me read this. Combination of two S's on the risk return diagram or the mean standard deviation diagram mean is r bar and standard deviation is sigma would give us the following risk return diagram, which is the main point is that which I mentioned is always within this triangle A, B, C. Point A has already been mentioned, point B has already been mentioned. What is point C? Point C, if you note, is that point where the overall risk is 0. That means, at some combination of, of the value of minus 1, rho minus 1, you can ensure that the overall risk can be made 0 for both combinations on A, B. It is possible. So, that can be put out. So, if you basically differentiate uh, that this is the total portfolio's um, uh, value uh, risk. So, if you basically differentiate that and, and, and put the risk as 0, you can find out that variable based on which the overall risk of the portfolio can be made 0. That is the differentiation case d y d x. So, let me continue reading it. The curve in the risk return diagram different, defined by the non-negative mixtures of two weights or two assets A and B lie within the triangular region, which I am again repeating. Defined by two original assets, which is A and B and the point on the vertical axis, which is point C is given by this. So, at this point, which is the height. So, if you have the axis, this is the height that height is given by r bar a into sigma a plus r bar b into sigma b divided by sigma a plus sigma b. 
So, that will give that point where the overall combination of the assets A and B give so called zero risk for the portfolio. Now, if we define the portfolio formed by A and B as a point P, which I mentioned, then we have the risk return variance for the portfolio about which we will now discuss, which I have already mentioned, but I will continue. Now, this is the formula which I have already written. So, this one the formula first formula which you see is basically the return. So, this suffix p means the portfolio in the bracket alpha means depending on the changing alpha value the portfolio value changes. So, this is w i into r by r r bar i i is equal to 1 to 2 because a and b are there. So, this will be alpha into r bar a plus 1 minus alpha into r bar alpha into r bar b into 1 minus alpha into r bar a will give you the total portfolio. So, you have to measure the portfolio along the y axis. Now, coming back to the risk which I was discussing as I continue doing the calculation. So, this is sigma square suffix p which is the variance of the portfolio and obviously, the function of alpha. So, this which I have already discussed w 1 w 2 or w a w b basically there are only two assets. So, i will change from a to b and j will also change from a to b. Covariance of r i into r bar which is the returns. So, basically this is the, the covariance based on the return which is a random variable. So, this would be as I mentioned 1 minus alpha square into sigma square a plus 2 alpha into 1 minus alpha into. So, there is a term which should be here. So, this is correlation coefficient, it should be there which I missed, sorry for that. So, second term will be 2 into correlation coefficient into alpha weight 1 minus alpha again the weight for the other asset sigma a b which is the, the value based on which okay, this value would not come, this sigma a b would take care of that which is correlation coefficient to in standard deviation of a standard deviation of b plus alpha square into sigma square b. So, when I expand it and find out the square root which is the standard division which you want to basically measure along the x axis, this is the formula. First term corresponding to A asset, third term corresponding to B asset, second term corresponding to the combinations of A and B which you have. Now, as I mentioned that if correlation coefficient is plus 1, you have the straight line joining linearly A and B. And for minus 1, we have two different equations. So, for corresponding to the case of plus 1, which is a plus b whole square, we find out the square root, which I mentioned. And for the case <coughs> when you have correlation as minus 1, you have a minus b whole square, which is also equal to b minus a whole square. That is why you use the mod because it will give you both the terms and that is why the triangular region is coming. So, B C connected is for the case for rho is equal to 1 and the point uh, A B connected is for, for the point is equal to rho is equal to 1 and A to C and C to B or B to C, C to A is the portion cor corresponding to the fact that the correlation coefficient is minus 1. So, what is the overall idea what we have been discussing? There are three or four main bullet points. Point one that we can find out the overall combined portfolio returns. Point number two, we can find out the overall combined portfolio variance and hence the standard deviation. Point number three, given that correlation coefficient is always between minus one and plus one, we can find out the overall so called shape between in inside which the overall combination of these two assets already already lie. And important fact is that as we are understanding as I keep repeating it is always a convex region. Hence optimization would be easy, we will see late, later on. Now, the question may arise that well we have found out for 2, what about 3 and more? Can we basically extend that logic? Answer is yes. So, let us extend that logic. Consider there are three assets as I am marking here. So, how will I consider these three assets? 
So, consider these assets are C, B and A. This C point is not the point where it where, where it touched the y axis in the combination of A and B. Now, let us consider that first let us con concentrate only on A and B. So, if I have A and B, then in the long run all combination of the A B considering the correlation coefficient of A and B is always between minus 1 and plus 1 both inclusive. Your overall area for the portfolio thus formed between A and B is between this triangle. So, consider this point A say for example, consider as D 1. So, line joining A and B is for the case when correlation coefficient is plus 1, line joining B to D 1 and D 1 to A is for the case when correlation coefficient between A and B is minus 1. Any point in between would be basically greater than uh, minus 1 and less than plus 1. Now, consider we have formulated a portfolio A and B. So, those two assets are being now represented by one portfolio consists of two assets. Arbitrarily consider, let me use a different color, the point is here. So, this is A and B now. If I consider A, B as an one asset now and C as another asset, then I can formulate another portfolio which consists of A, B, C such that line joining A, in a B and C is for the case where I have a portfolio which joins A, B and C such that the correlation between A, B and C is plus 1 and the line joining C to D 2 and D 2 to A, B is that uh, combination for which the case the correlation coefficient is minus 1 and any combination of A, B and C which basically now formulates a new portfolio A, B, C. So, let me write it as my using say for example, the dark blue. This would be any arbitrarily point A, B, C which would now be the portfolio for 3. So, obviously, it is always inside the triangle. 2 inside the triangle, 3 inside the triangle and we can expand that. So, which means that whatever the combination we do, considering correlation coefficient is always between these two values, it is always inside the triangle, hence convex, hence optimization possible. Suppose that in place of 2, we have proceeded to 3. Now, consider we have n assets, where each has a certain return and a variance and all have the same correlation between them. All the correlations are same. Even if it is not the same, the idea would not change. So, we can plot these assets as points in the risk return diagram, even the correlation same, not same, it is not that important. What is important is that we are able to consider correlation is always between minus 1 and plus 1, hence we inside the triangle which is being formed for all the combinations of the asset which we have. One can form different combinations of portfolios from these n assets. So, let us consider if you take two assets from this n, it is n c 2 combinations. If you go to three assets, it is n c 3 hour combinations. Slowly, we are combining assets. After three, we consider four. After four, we consider fifth asset, six assets, so on and so forth, till we combine the last one, which is the nth one. Hence, all the assets being combined, we basically ensure that we have a portfolio which consists of all the n assets and is always any combination of the different combination of the weights we have because now the weights are w 1 to w n, w 1 to w n all these n number of weights are always between 0 and 1 considering short selling is not there. So, any combination which you can do infinite sets will always ensure a particular portfolio of n assets which is inside the triangle always convex. Each time we take a certain number of assets we must ensure that the weights of all the assets taken up always add up to 1 all these sets of points, what, what I mean by the sets of points is that as I keep changing the weights, I basically have a set of, of uh, loci of the set of points which, which are possible by combination, which are always inside the triangle. Sorry if I am repeating it, because that is very important, which I thought I should basically make it very clear. These sets of points which you formulate 
are basically infinite sets of combination which you can have from this n assets that is known as the feasible set of the feasible region that is what is feasible based on the combination of these assets 1 to n and all of these points are practically possible to be formulated. But obviously, which is important to be remembered, this feasible region is convex to the left. As I mentioned and as I explained that when we consider two asset, when we consider three asset and I also mentioned then we consider the n assets. But the answer will, a question will immediately come up is if there are infinite sets of points which are feasible, do I get a chance or do I have a chance or do I have a method to find out which one set of points are the best among these feasible assets. We will immediately answer that using two very simple concepts which I have discussed when we are discussing what are the bullet points to be covered in the discussion of this lecture. So, here it is. The feasible set for n points by n we mean an infinite actually can it mean an infinite number of such assets. So, if I basically consider this dark black line over which I am just hovering this red pointer, which is convex as I said and in my last slide in the 11th one which I mentioned, all these points which I am again hashing with red are feasible, any point is feasible, any point is possible. And also we continue, continue plotting r bar or small r bar or capital R bar along the y axis and sigma which is standard division along the x axis. Now, we want to use two important concepts here based on which we will be immediately in a position to find a set of out of this feasible set, a set of points which will give me the best idea what is the efficient frontier where everybody would like to be there in order to maximize or minimize the maximize the return or minimize the risk. So, the first point is I will go from the last one which is mentioned here as non satiation. Non satiation means more I give you more you want. Practically that may not be possible because uh, we may ask that if a person is very hungry or, or wants something and uh, that is immediately given to him or her, the person consumes it. So, if you give more and more at a certain rate after time, the marginal rate of return or marginal benefit which the person gives gets slowly decreases, but we will ignore that we will consider the more I give him to her more <coughs> the person will want. So, according to the concept of non cessation it reflects the idea that everything being equal investors always want more money hence they want the highest possible expected return for a given standard deviation. So, if I mentioned that in quality terms, I have to basically now quantify this idea. So, I will come soon. The second point is people are always risk averse. So, obviously, we will see later on the set of persons can be either the person hates risk, person is indifferent to risk, person uh, loves risk. So, we will consider the person is risk averse is that one person is a person who would always seek such a portfolio from a group of portfolio for which the risk is minimum given his or her return profile. This is the expected return profile. On the other hand, there are other two set of person which I, I mentioned. Uh, risk preferring person is the one who would do the reverse that is seek a portfolio which has the highest risk, but remember in that case he or she would like to be, com be compensated with a higher return for that portfolio, but because they cannot be any free lunch. So, I would I am I am willing to expand uh, increase my level of risk provided it is being compensated with a higher level of return. And the risk neutral person is the one who is indifferent between risk for a certain return of portfolio and would choose any one of the portfolios depending on the risk return profile. So, I will basically concentrate on these two important properties non satiation and risk averse person and utilize this concept in the feasible region or a feasible set concept and try to find out that what would be the best set choice of those points which will ensure that I am, I am able to reach the optimum level which will be known or the set of points which will be known as the efficient frontier. An important thing to note, I will come to the diagram is that we will analyze the portfolio choice for risk aversion person with the added condition of non satiation 
with this consideration we can easily see that only the upper portion will be visible or or applicable so let me basically draw it here so consider this is the return i am not marking what is there on the y axis because we already know i have been mentioning this is the risk and your efficient frontier the overall efficient not the frontier efficient this feasible set was all these portions which i am now trying to mark these are all these points they are infinite sets of points so obviously you have to now make the choice using these two concept non cessation and risk averse so let us utilize that i'll use the red color so the consider let me consider the red color first so non cessation more i give you more you want more i give to the investor more he or she will demand at the same level of risk so if i consider this line which is the same fixed risk so obviously the person will always try to go up and reach this point over on which he or she cannot go so the extreme most point on the feasible set is a set which is actually applicable considering the point of non cessation now consider risk aversion i'll use a different color consider same level of return and the risk is always high on to the right hand side so the person will always try to move on to the left till he or she hits that point so if you find out that all sets of point which are in the top left corner so actually i will have that set of points from this feasible set which i will now mark in a different color and hash it so this line only so i should mark one thing I should make it clear so i should let me draw it because i i marked one portion which was not so consider this point was there right and the highlighter was used yellow so this was the red point now if i consider the non cessation and the risk aversion so we mark in red these are the points not below not below this this violet line because why i am saying if i consider any one point here just it's it's too small but let me draw it if i draw this point so if you see at the same level of risk there are two points this one and this one obviously i would not like to go to this i'll always reach the extreme level so all this red one which i will mark with the highlighter concerning red so this would be the efficient frontier this one so that is the best set of points where everybody will try to reach now your question would be there are infinite points which should i reach that will depend on your what is your risk and return profile to what level of risk are you able to sustain what level of return are you willing to earn so if you consider this vertical red line which i already drawn so based on your level of risk any point which you cannot sustain over and above the risk so all the set of points which are left on to that that curve that would be the set of points which are applicable for you so the red bold one which i have drawn is basically the efficient frontier we will come to that within few minutes so with the consideration we can easily see that only the upper half of the of the minimum variance set will be of interest to our that feasible set is basically now becomes the minimum variance set which is denoted in the slide this curve is known as the efficient frontier which i mentioned this frontier is the conglomeration which i have set of only efficient portfolios in the sense that they provide the best mean variance combination for most of the investors based on which they are going to invest so where you want to be as i said 
few minutes back will depend on what is the maximum level of risk you can sustain or what is the overall return you definitely want to have and so on and so forth. The left boundary which I have just marked in the bold um, red line, the left boundary of a feasible set is called the minimum variance frontier. Since for any value of the mean rate of the return, the feasible point with the smallest variance or standard deviation is the corresponding left boundary point. We will come to that in, in explanation. This is a special point on this set and having the minimum variance, it is also known as the minimum variance point. So, you have the minimum variance set and the point which is the minimum risk is basically known as the minimum variance point. So, we have already found out the minimum variance set, which is the conglomeration of the best set of points depending on the non cessation, depending on the point of risk aversion. And once the minimum variance set of points are found out, you can find, uh, find out the minimum variance set. So, here I will mark. So, if you, if you notice here, this minimum variance set and the minimum variance point the minimum variance set where you have all the so the the the, cons, the corresponding values which will give you the best return and the risk combination so i already found out the so called efficient frontier and then the minimum variance set is these set of points and obviously i'll always try to i'm highlighting it i'm making it a little bit bold and always try to be there on this set of point, which is the efficient frontier. And this point, which I have, is the minimum variance point. So, the now the answer question will come up, how do I find it? We will discuss that later on, but let me give you a, a nice idea, which is very simple to understand. So, let me use the black color. So, now, based on the non cessation and uh, the concept of this idea of minimum risk, we have already found out the efficient frontier. Now, the risk of that any, any particular portfolio we already know is double summation i is equal to 1 to n, w i, w j, sigma i j, which is equal to double summation, w i, w j, rho i j, sigma i, sigma j. Now, this is the so called combination based on which I want to find out the so called combination the weights based on which I want to find out. So, for the case of 2, which is very easy to find out, which I did mention, but I uh, will again highlight it. So, if there are 2 w 1 square into sigma 1 square, this 1 and 2, this subscript 1 and later on 2 we will see are basically a and b 2 2 assets 2 rho 1 2 w 1 w 2 sigma 1 sigma 2 plus w this w 2 won't come because we know that one minus w 1 whole square sigma 2 whole square. This is sigma for the portfolio. Now, differentiate that with respect to w 1. Consider this is the function, put it to 0. So, that will give you a particular w 1 point. So, the from here, you will get w 1. Similarly, some w 1 star you will get 1 minus w 2 w 1 star, which is equal to w 2. Plug these two values in this equation, which I will use another color. So, that will be 
So, I am, I am now going to utilize W 1 star and W 2 star. So, this is W 2 star. W 1 star into R 1 bar plus W 2 star into R 2 bar and W 1 W 2 star we have already found out. So, this point would be the return which I am getting here, this one. If it is only two asset for two more than two asset you have to optimize. And if I want to utilize the risk, so this is basically I already have W 1 star whole square sigma 1 square plus 2 row 1 2 W 1 star into W 2 star into sigma 1 sigma 2 plus W 2 star into sigma 2 square. So, this value will give me the risk. So, this is also the return. So, I found out both the points, abscess and the ordinate based on which I can find out. If the question is that how do I find out for 3? So, there obviously you have to do a either if you have only one equation you want to minimize you have to find out the combinations based on which w 1 w 2 w 3, but then added equation which you have is w 1 plus w 2 is w plus w 3 is 1 based on that you do the calculations and find it out accordingly. Now, once you have found out the minimum variance point. In the minimum variance point. So, all the points which are below this efficient frontier are eliminated, they are not needed because everybody wants to reach the efficient frontier, which is this. Now, there is a dotted portion there. What does it mean? So, I mark it in blue. This is so, that is the point which we will see later on and which will give us an idea of one fund theorem, so on and so forth. That is the point till that level any combinations of all the end risk assets which are there in the portfolio are being done without considering short selling. The moment you consider any one of them as the short selling, it will be the case that one of those assets, any one or more of the assets has to be short sold the money utilized and invested in other of this. If there are two assets which are being short sold, so n minus 2 of them have to be utilized in a positive sense in the sense the weights would be more than 1 for those two, but some always remains for all this n assets as 1. So, you can basically go into infinity depending on the different combinations which you have for the, the portfolio. Uh, with this, I will um, uh, close this fifth lecture and consider uh, the extension of how you solve the model, how you basically have maximum re return, minimum risk and considering different combinations of mark which model can be done. And later on, we will see a different type of methods, different type of very simple con concept, how you bring the concept of, of, of risky assets and solve the problems accordingly. Have a nice day and thank you very much.